Hi, and welcome to Resin Chem Tech. This is the second in a series of short videos to help you out if you're thinking about starting your own smart home or home automation system. In the first video, we talked about setting goals and solving issues. One of the most important steps, which we'll cover in this video, is the selection of a smart home platform or system to act as the brains for your home automation. This is not a trivial step. You're gonna be spending substantial time and possibly a fair amount of money getting the system set up the way you like. One of the last things you want to happen is to paint yourself into a corner. Find out you can't do some of the things you wanted to do because you selected the wrong platform. So before beginning, you'll need to do some planning and some research. And let me say right up front that there are dozens and dozens of platforms out there for running a smart home. And you'll find just as many fanboys. It's just as bad as PC versus Mac, PlayStation versus Xbox. You'll find people that are adamant about this is the best smart home solution out there. Well, that's going to depend on you. For me, Home Assistant was the best option. I selected it over two years ago and I've been very happy with it. But I did my research two years ago. A lot has changed in the past two years. Nowadays, you can use something like Google Home or Amazon and do a lot of smart home integration. Two years ago, that wasn't possible. So you'll need to do your own research, determine your own goals, needs, and wants to be able to select the proper smart home platform for you. For example, I would never recommend Home Assistant for my dad. It just wouldn't fit his needs and is overly complex for his skill set. In a similar manner, I wouldn't recommend Samsung Smart Homes for my neighbor who's an electrical engineer. He's going to want to tinker. He's going to want more control over what Samsung Smart Things will give him. So. Fanboys aside, and I'm sure there'll be comments down below, you need to determine what your needs are, what your goals are, do your research, and figure out which system makes the most sense for you. But here are a few things that you'll need to consider. First, your overall goals and your future needs and wants. We covered that a little bit in the first quick tip video. You also need to think about the current devices that you already own and their compatibility with other systems. You want to consider the wife or family acceptance factor. You need to think about your current household tech platforms. Is everyone in the house iPhones and Mac users? Everyone PC and Android? Or do you, like most homes, have a mix? You'll need to consider that as well. You'll need to consider your level of comfort with tinkering. Are you like me? And when you buy something like a smart TV, want to read the manual cover to cover to understand every feature and every option? Or are you the kind of person who just wants to pull it out of the box, plug it in, and have it work? This will have an impact on which system you consider. How important is remote access and being able to control your home when you're at work or on the road or traveling? What is your comfort level with cloud services, security, and your data? And finally, you'll need to think about budget. We're gonna briefly talk about each of these and you'll need to apply them to your own situation. The first step is setting goals. We covered that in the, in the first quick tip video. Before considering a platform, you need to think about what you want your smart home to be. But be forewarned, smart home automation is a deep, deep rabbit hole. Many enthusiasts will tell you that while they started out with only a few devices, today they have dozens or even hundreds of individual devices. Be prepared to spend some time. So unless you're adamant about you're only gonna have a handful of devices, maybe a thermostat, a couple of smart lamps, you wanna make sure that you select a system that will grow with your needs. Think about other goals and desires. How important is voice control? Or would you prefer not to have these voice speakers in your home? How will others in your house or guests and visitors interact with your smart home system? Come up with a list. First, lay out any current issues that you might want to resolve. Then add other things that you might want to be able to do in the future. Think about other household members. What might make their life more convenient? Would it be nice to get a notification when the laundry is done or the dishwasher finishes? The washer has completed its cycle. Add in any must-haves and must-not-haves. This list will come in handy as you start to evaluate the various platforms. Think about current devices you already own. Do you already have a handful of, or more of devices in your home? Odds are you do if you're looking at this video. If so, you'll want to gather a list of these devices, their manufacturers, and the names of any apps that you currently use. When investigating platforms, you'll want to see if these devices are able to be integrated. 
And don't forget things like smart TVs, game consoles, or other internet connected devices. You may not find a single platform that supports them all, but you'll likely want a platform that supports as many as possible, even if you don't integrate or automate them on day one. Next, you'll need to consider the wife or family acceptance factor. I recently attended a home automation conference and listened to a speaker explain why the term wife acceptance factor should not be used anymore. It implied that women weren't tech savvy or appreciative of technology. The, der the term became popular a number of years ago in the 80s around uh, home theater and home stereo systems. And it's been picked up by the uh, smart home community and you'll hear the term used a lot. But it really probably should be family acceptance factor or spouse acceptance factor. In my particular case, it is just my wife and I, so I do tend to use the wife acceptance factor. Uh, I do need her on board and I need her to be accepting uh, uh, the smart home. Mary has departed Cowboy. That was my Google speaker going off. The term should probably be family acceptance factor. Basically, other household members need to be accepting of the smart home system and the devices in it. If it becomes more complicated to perform tasks that used to be simple, you're gonna face resentment and pushback on future projects. So think about how family and guests will interact with this system. This could help drive your decision on which platform to choose. You'll also need to consider the current household tech platforms. Does everyone in your home have an iPhone? Do they all use Macs and iPads? Or is your house like mine, a mixed bag? I'm PC, Android, my wife, iPhone, iPad. This can have major impact on your platform decision in at least three regards. First is the type of devices that the platform may or may not support. For example, if you're strictly an Apple household, iPhones, Macs, then Apple HomeKit may be an option for you. For me, it was not. But secondly, if you opt for a software platform, it may or may not run on all operating systems. For example, there may be an option of a software platform that runs on Linux only, or Windows only, or Mac only. Finally, household members will likely need to interact with the platform. Is that platform available on their preferred device? Will the platform run on an iPhone? Will it run on Android? This is another thing to put onto the list for evaluation. And one very important decision is how much do you like to tinker? Home automation platforms run the full gamut here, from systems that are basically plug and play. Take them out of the box, plug them in, they'll find your devices and create an interface for you, to ones where you have to do almost everything manually. However, be aware that generally, the more plug and play, the less flexibility a system has. If you are someone that likes to tinker and you want to be able to create your own dashboards in detail exactly the way you want, you're probably going to have to go with a system that's going to require you to spend a little more time and maybe even learn a thing or two. And there are a lot of platforms that, are, that bridge the gap in between these as well, give you some flexibility but with some plug and play options. I will say again, as a home assistant user, the level of tinkering required from two years ago today is substantially different. Uh, many things can be done today without writing a single line of code or looking at a single configuration file. Two years ago, almost every automation, almost every device required manual configuration. So in some cases, you might have to learn a thing or two. You might have to learn a little bit of coding, but there's lots and lots of help out there on the internet. So while this might be an opportunity to learn something new, it might be something you have zero interest in doing. You might wanna just plug it in and have it work. So add that to the list and your willingness to tinker and possibly learn. Next, you'll wanna consider building versus buying your devices. This is similar to the above category, but can impact your decision as well. Do you have an interest in creating and building your own smart home devices? Things like LED light controllers, motion detectors, temperature and humidity sensors can be built yourself very cheaply with minimal skills. Really just the ability to follow an online tutorial or an online video. In some cases, you don't even have to learn to solder. Just to give you an example, I purchased a Philips Hughes motion detector and it cost me approximately $40. You can build your own motion detector for under $10, even without soldering a single wire. An LED light strip controller can be bought for $10, $20, and will offer you a handful of, of effects 
and, and control of the light strip. However, you can build your own for around $8 that has over 100 different effects and is built specifically for home automation platforms. If you think you might be building your own devices at some point, you'll want to assure that your smart home platform will support these types of devices. Next, you'll want to consider the importance of controlling your home remotely. Do you want to be able to control your lights, set your thermostat, monitor your devices while you're on vacation, while you're at work, while you're out traveling? Are you comfortable with the trade-off in security of opening your home up to the internet for these conveniences? Would you be willing to possibly pay a monthly or annual subscription fee for the ability to access your devices remotely? Think about what and how much control you might want to have when you're away from the home. Again, this could have an impact on the platform that you decide to use. Think about cloud versus local. Talked about this some in the past in, in the initial video and again already in this one, but think about how comfortable you are with your devices and your activities being stored in the cloud and your data being collected. Also think about reliability. What if the internet goes down? What impact is that going to have on your smart home and your home automations? There are major trade-offs here, but it's probably one of the bigger decisions you're going to have to make. Some platforms pride themselves on being local only and maintaining your privacy and security, while others are completely cloud or internet dependent. Now, I'll admit to being biased here as my system and nearly all my devices are local to my own network and are not internet dependent but you'll need to consider for yourself the trade-off between security and convenience in remote access. And finally is budget. Of course, you'll need to consider how much money you're willing to spend to create your smart home. Now, this doesn't necessarily apply to the individual devices themselves, which again, can be costly, or you might be able to build yourself for pennies on the dollar. But as far as the platform themselves, they can range from completely free if you're willing to supply an existing PC, laptop, or maybe spend $50 on a Raspberry Pi, all the way to thousands of dollars for a professionally installed system. Of course, you're probably going to be somewhere in the middle. So you can purchase a plug and play hub for one to $200. Note that some systems may also require a monthly or annual fee to access their cloud services and continue to use those systems. So you'll need to think about which option, what costs make the most sense for you. So once you've thought about all of these things, you need to gather all this information together, put together some lists, and start doing some research. You can simply do a Google search for smart home platforms, smart automation platforms, and you'll find dozens and dozens of solutions. I would encourage you to spend some time on the websites of these devices. See what kind of integrations they have. See how much of it matches up with your wants, your needs, your current devices. No one can tell you which is the best solution for you. Again. I opted for Home Assistant. That was two years ago. I've been very happy with Home Assistant, but a lot has happened in two years in the home automation market. So I would have to reevaluate from the very beginning. I have no complaints about Home Assistant, and it has come a long way as well, but it may or may not be the right solution for you. Don't listen to the fanboys. Do your own research and decide what makes the most sense for you and your home automation system. Thanks for watching. Again, uh, be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more of these videos and hit the notification icon. In the next video, we'll take a look at some of my personal golden rules for adding new devices to my smart home platform. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.